Well, the way I got into biomedical engineering goes back over 40 years. I was a, a graduate student at MIT in chemical engineering, and pretty much all my classmates went into the oil industry. And I just wasn't excited about doing that. I wanted to think of a way that I could make more of an impact. And I looked for various jobs. I ended up uh, becoming a postdoctoral fellow in a surgery department uh, for a man named Judah Folkman at Boston Children's Hospital at Harvard Medical School. And that was just a, a life-changing experience for me. I was the only engineer in the entire place. And for me, in a way, it was almost like being a kid in a candy store because I could see all these different medical problems that were being solved by surgeons or biologists. And I started to think about how they might be solved by engineers. And I got different kinds of ideas on how to create new biomaterials, how to create new tissues and organs, um, how to create uh, nanoparticles or or drug delivery systems. And so that was the early basis for my own career as I would then move to MIT as a young faculty member. Amy came along uh, a number of years later and I was honored that they wanted to ask me to help and, and be a part of it. Uh, and I also had gotten involved in things like science policy where the FDA had asked me about being chair of their science board, their highest advisory board. I think what happened in bioengineering is it moved in multiple directions. Scientifically, it moved very quickly because of uh, so many advances in biology and medicine, and engineers would find new ways to c make findings and contribute to biology and medicine, and that, that continues to this day. From a policy standpoint, I think it creates new challenges and has created new challenges for FDA, for government, for reimbursement, uh, and so forth. So I think uh, there's so many areas that uh, this whole revolution in bioengineering has, uh, has fostered. I think if you ask most professors, we, we all think the science we do is very important, but probably the biggest thing that I think so many of us are concerned about is funding not just for ourselves, but also for young scientists, for young faculty members, particular funding for, you know, fundamental bioengineering research. I mean, I feel delighted and flattered and honored to be in the group of people who have won the Galetti Award. I mean, these are people, many of whom are close personal friends like Nick Pepys uh, and Bob Neerum and others. Uh, people who have been my own students like uh, Cato Lorenzen, people who have been my collaborators like Art Khoury, and I mean, actually, the entire list I, I, I know very well. I mean, it's just a, a great group of people, and, and, and I consider them all friends. Several of the areas that I think are exciting today are areas like tissue engineering and regenerative medicine on the one hand, nanotechnology and drug delivery, and of new agents like siRNA and mRNA on the other hand, and there's others as well. I think that that the biggest issue really today that young researchers and even older researchers like me face is funding. I think that's certainly the case in academia. Uh, I, I think that's the number one issue that I think that we do worry about. I think science policy can help if, if there are ways to get more funding for, for people doing, you know, good research. I think that's, that, that to me is the most important thing. Um, there are obviously other p policy things that could be done too. I mean, there's enormous amounts of litigation and other things that I, I think sometimes take away from doing, uh, you know, research. And, and I think that those are not, not, are not positive either a lot of times for industry as well. We have a large lab and we're doing a, a lot of things aimed at creating new biomaterials that I hope will change a lot of the future of medicine. One big area has been tissue engineering uh, and regenerative medicine, which has to do with ways of taking sometimes cells and materials and combining them in ways to make new tissues and organs. So we're working on ways of making new vocal cords, new spinal cords, new intestines, uh, all kinds of uh, new pancreases, all kinds of uh, tissues and organs. A lot of it's fundamental research as well. We're also doing a lot in the area of drug delivery systems. One of the biggest areas is nanotechnology. Can we deliver G new possible drugs like siRNA, which can very specifically turn genes off? Or, on, in contrast, could we deliver mRNA, which could turn genes on and, and give new function, uh, for, say, for people who don't have enzymes to treat enzyme deficiency diseases and things like that? Could we do remote control drug delivery? Uh, we've actually done things where we could put chips in the body 
and, uh, and actually have programs that can tell the drug when to come out. Someday, I hope, we'll have little biosensors in them. Uh, and then we're working on delivering drugs to all parts of the body, to the brain, uh, which I think could be great, say, for Alzheimer's disease. Some of the things we've already done are, are now treating patients with brain cancer. We're also looking at new ways of delivering drugs to the lung, drugs through the skin, uh, pretty much every part of the body. Well, I guess my advice really to, to people, and it may sound simple, uh, it probably is simple, but it's, it's simple to say and not, not necessarily simple to do. But I always tell people, my students and colleagues, to just to follow their dreams, follow their passion, as opposed, say, to following money. I think money will follow, if, or, 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 and even if it doesn't, the most important thing to me is, is to be happy, to, to do things that you really love. I also think a lot of times you're going to hit obstacles, you're going to hit roadblocks, and you know, it might be easy to give up. I think you don't. I think you keep trying and trying. And uh, uh, so those are some of the things that I would, uh, would give as advice.